intelligent people that really just want to find out what's true. I'm an amateur anthropologist and the guy that Flint Dibble accused of weaponizing hate against him on Twitter. I don't give a fuck because Twitter's not a real place. I listened to the Dibble Hancock Joe Rogan episode three times and I live streamed it once. I had some issues, especially with what he said about maritime archaeology, which I have a little bit of experience in. I am an archaeologist who studies ancient food. So I started obsessively reading papers and I found a few inaccuracies on what Flint said on maritime archaeology. This video is not about the greater theories of Graham Hancock, but only about maritime archaeology using what was discussed on this very popular Joe Rogan episode as a reference. Graham has mentioned that the bulk of marine archaeology has focused on shipwrecks. So the thing is, at this point, we have something like three million shipwrecks from around the world. What do you mean, have? We have three million shipwrecks that have been mapped. Not relevant. According to, my to UNESCO. UNESCO does not say that. Flint says we have them, but that's only an estimate. We have about 250,000, according to the Global Maritime Wrecks Database and wrecksite.edu. And I keep studied. showing you areas that we have evidence for. Immediately after bringing up the shipwrecks, Flint asked Graham why there are no shipwrecks for his supposed lost civilization. If this is a global civilization with ships, why is it that we don't have shipwrecks from this global civilization? If we're looking for an, a, a civilization that's traversing the oceans, we should find these shipwrecks. Flint supports this argument that we should find shipwrecks if they ever existed by citing a 7,000 year old shipwreck. We're gonna talk about this shipwreck more in a second. And that's really not true. What's the oldest one that we've found so far? There was one that was just published from about I think it was about six, 7,000 years ago off the coast of Italy that I saw. So I think he's referring to the dugout canoes found in Lake Brocchiano outside of Rome, making this find not a ship, not a wreck, and not off the coast. None of those things are true. The lack of saltwater tides in their location makes these relatively much easier to find and be preserved and be excavated by archaeologists. The actual oldest shipwreck and not a canoe in a lake is the Docus, 4,700 years ago. That's not true. Out. Yes, it is, Flint. Joe then asks Flint about the deterioration of shipwrecks. At what point in time would they deteriorate completely? Underwater environments are really good for the preservation of organic remains. And Flint is correct in this statement, even though it doesn't answer the question. It's been well studied that underwater environments are better for preservation than on land, in general. While it's true that archaeological sites do preserve better underwater, there's no evidence that things would survive for 30,000 years. Flint throughout this episode uses the lack of evidence of something in the archeological evidence as evidence that it won't happen. But then here he's purely speculating on something that didn't happen. Would it stay that way for 20,000 years you think? Oh yeah. yeah. This is simply not true. There's this idea that things just decay the older they are. It depends on the burial environment. One of the main determinants of how well something will preserve and for how long in the archeological record is it being an anaerobic environment. And this is true on land and in sea. In a bog in Ireland, a teenager's body was found a few years ago. It was so well preserved that the people who found it actually called the police because it looked so fresh. But this is a very specific environment, just like it takes a very specific environment underwater for things to actually preserve for as long as 4,700 years. I mean, the preservation underwater is amazing. There's the shipwreck off the coast of Italy. So Flint here is referring to the shipwreck, the Beau Ferrer, and it's from the coast of Spain, not Italy. So I think that it's wrong. And this ship specifically is actually very emblematic of the unique and rare environment needed to preserve ships for thousands of years. The environment is actually so unique that it's the only ever large Roman shipping vessel ever found, despite there having been countless of these vessels lost to Poseidon over Rome's long history. So the Bau Ferrer is the exception rather than the rule, demonstrating the perfect conditions required for something to be preserved underwater, not only for thousands of years, but 20 or 30,000 years, as Flint claims. I think I got that date wrong. Later on in this episode, Flint and Graham are discussing Clovis first. And Flint cites a new theory that has replaced Clovis first. And so what we're looking at is this new migration pathway, the kelp highway hypothesis done by John Erlinson. And Flint goes on to describe parts of this kelp highway hypothesis, the heir apparent to Clovis first. But I'm not sure if Flint has actually ever read the paper on this theory because it not only theorizes, but assumes Ice Age seafaring, not even bothering to bring up Ice Age seafaring as a topic of debate. But wait, there's more. This is because the kelp highway hypothesis 
built upon decades of archaeological research into seafaring during the Pleistocene, or Ice Age. While the Kelp Highway Coastal Migration Theory was explicitly named in a paper by Erlinson in 2007, Erlinson had been studying this since the 1990s. And that's not all. And had already argued in 2001 that seafaring, as old as 150,000 years ago, had played a role in human geographical expansion. In 2002, Erlinson was already arguing for the yet unnamed Pleistocene maritime colonization of the Americas. In a chapter of a book, The First Americans, published by the California Academy of Sciences. This chapter from the early 2000s discusses research from the 80s and 90s into Pleistocene seafaring. There's even evidence that goes back as far as 850,000 years of Homo florensius, Homo erectus possibly, on the island of Flores. And even that's not all. There's significant research on human presence on islands in New Guinea that would have required island hopping in distances of up to 90 kilometers. There's evidence on the colonization of Crete, which would have required long maritime voyages about 50,000 years ago. There's shell middens showing human presence 15 to 35,000 years ago in places that would have taken human voyages 140 kilometers to get to. There's the Ryukyu Islands where human remains found that would have taken at least 75 kilometers from 15 to 30,000 years ago, and more from at least 20,000 years ago that people in another island in Japan crossed a 50 kilometer channel seemingly just to get obsidian. This area is full of evidence of human presence going back at least 50,000 years, and the gray lines show the lowest that the coast has ever been. Now, is that all? Nope. This paper from 2018 from Stanford University talks about the human presence, including maritime travel, 50 to 55,000 years ago in New Guinea. And they don't have to do this research themselves. They have the references because this research has already been done. This is an earlier paper from 2008 from some of the same people. And they conclude even in 2008 that the archeological evidence supports the idea of maritime travel into Oceania as early as 45,000 years ago, even without any of these boats that Flint wants to see so bad. There's even an article that compiles trade routes from as early as 40,000 years ago in these nice graphics. And not a single single boat has ever been found. So why are all these maritime archaeologists comfortable with asserting that there was sea travel during the Pleistocene, even without the existence of watercraft in the archaeological record? I'm trying to show the facts here. If underwater conditions are so perfect for preservation, why have none of these Pleistocene archaeologists found any boats? Why did Flint pass off a unique and rare find as standard? Why can't Flint tell the difference between a shipwreck found off the coast and a canoe found in a lake. Why did Flint claim that there were 3 million shipwrecks mapped when that number is an estimate? And why wasn't Jamie fact-checking any of this? If you just want to see more anthropology and history videos, but don't trust mainstream academia, subscribe to this channel. I also do a weekly cultural anthropology interview podcast here. Topics like astrology, linguistics, and American the move to Kyrgyzstan, and natalism. We love diseases because they kill a lot of people at once. Watch one of these videos now or don't. I'm not your dad.